We'll get started this morning. Thank you all for being with us. <clears throat> there is much sickness going around. A lot of folks has had it. Uh, I'm getting over it. I got a little something on my throat bothering me today, but other than that, we're good. Uh, we took all our medicine, went through all that process, tried to get all that healed up, and uh, had a good week up at the Ark and the Creation Museum. We are very grateful for that opportunity and a lot of good learning there. And we're going to try to put together a plan for taking our young folks up there and let them uh, get a lot of learning in. That is an ex it, 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 it's just wonderful uh, what they've done there in the Creation uh, Museum as well as the Ark and the duplication of the Ark. Now, it is amazing how huge that thing is and uh, three stories of it i mean it's 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 amazing uh how big that thing is and to think of noah and his family and all the animals that was on there and uh that's just amazing and the provisions uh, that was prepared for that uh, it, it's a wonderful thing uh, if if you don't know anything about a bible you've not read one it is more than wonderful to get to see that uh, because it goes through and shows you <clears throat> all that the Lord did in giving uh, the great plans to Noah and putting it together. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful adventure, and we're going to try to put something together for our young folks and get them up there uh, in the very near future. Amen. Amen. That's a good thing for the young folks to do, isn't it? Amen. Well, we got to have chaperones. Yes, ma'am. So, see, we got we got a good plan already in the works, and um, we'll take the young folks and the young at heart, and we'll go up there and enjoy uh, that experience. But you better put some tennis shoes on. There is a lots of walking involved in that, uh, and it's a wonderful thing. But anyway, uh, many folks are sick. Uh, the new ones in the Bowers family, Chris has now got it. Uh, and then Rick's dad, Moody, had to be put in the hospital. They're working on him. He's got some infections uh, that they're dealing with. So pray for uh, Brother Rick's dad. All the other crowds that's, that's dealing with the flu, flu A, flu B, COVID, strep. What else is out there going around? <laughs> It's, it's, it's a mess, <clears throat> and we've tried to be very careful through the years with this COVID stuff. Uh, I don't care how careful and how hibernated you might be, you're going to get it. It's coming around. Uh, I don't want nobody sick, and we've done everything in our power to stay away from folks and keep it down. Uh, I'm two weeks out of it, so two weeks since it started on me, two weeks ago Friday, uh, was when I started with the flu part of it, and they diagnosed me and Judy with the flu B. Uh, Y'all know that I don't always agree with the diagnosis of the doctors because mine was more of a COVID deal than it was the flu, uh, but that was the diagnosis they gave us. We did what we were supposed to, stayed away from everybody the best we could. Tamiflu did help a whole lot, so I've tried to encourage everybody, when you feel it start, get to the doctor Get you shots, get you vaccine or not vaccines, but your 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 Tamiflu's and all that stuff to help you because it was a tremendous difference from Tamiflu for me. So it did help. So maybe it was the flu alone, but uh, I lost taste and smell, and uh, that's not typical for the flu. So uh, anyway, remember that. Remember all of our sick folk. We got a ton of folks that's really going through it. The Beatty family has had a severe case of it, uh, David, uh, Kelly, the kids, they're all going through a terrible time with this flu thing, so please, please pray much for them. Uh, others that's had it, you know, the Clantons has got it, the, the Brooks has got it, the Johnsons has got it, uh, you know, you can go all around the whole church with folks that's, that's got it, the Dallingers, Miss Dars is dealing with a dose of it, so it's everywhere. Uh, Get all your vitamin C's and zincs and whatever else Miss K tells you to take, and uh, maybe that'll help you stay 
uh, well through it all. But uh, much prayer for all the folks that are going through the sickness. And looks like hopefully we're going to all be through this thing in a week or so and get back to a normal. So that is the good side of it. Uh, do continue to pray for all those folks. Also remember Tuesday we will be, we will be holding the service for uh, Mark Ashley, Miss Teresa's brother. Uh, passed away, and uh, they're going to be having a memorial service for him at Troutman Funeral Home Tuesday. Uh, the visiting time will be at 1 o'clock, and the service will be at 2 o'clock. So do pray for the family. Pray for Teresa, uh, her mother, and the other folks, uh, the family that's involved there. Just pray that God will touch and help and give the comfort and the grace that they need in these hours. It's a it's a tough thing anytime you deal with death whether it's somebody that's a uh, a very 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 old person or a very young person doesn't matter uh, death has a sting to it and uh, it does hurt our hearts so uh, much prayer for these folks and all that the Lord uh, needs to do in that pray for me that the Lord will help me in conducting the service there Tuesday uh, that God will bless us give us the the, the, the words that he would have us to share and uh, souls be saved and the saints of God will get the comfort and the strength that they need. All right, we're going to sing us a song there. Uh, they've got it up for you there. We'll sing a little bit. Got the gals going to sing a little bit for us, and then we've got some preaching for us lined up today. Let me remind you, he's already put it up there, and remind you that we're not having a night service, uh, trying to keep the sickness down, and, and with it being the, the time of the year that it is and all, uh, we're, we're trying to do what we we think is best for the church family in that. So we will not be having a night service here. Uh, there is some that are going on in the community, so you, you have what uh, the Lord leads you to do there. But uh, there will be some online as well. Uh, there's some that's carrying uh, uh, watch night services. They'll be going up to uh, 10, 11 o'clock at night tonight. So uh, if you want to tune into some of those, you may can catch some of those online. And uh, I think Brother Roger Holland at Liberty's got a, a late service going on over at his church on 115 there. So uh, just pray about that. Pray for those folks. And uh, pray the Lord to help us. And uh, we can get this year cranked back up wide open. Everybody will be well. We can get back next Sunday. Everybody will be back to normal. And uh, we can enjoy uh, the labor the Lord has for us. The Lord laid in my heart that we're going to do so much the more in 2024 out of the book of Hebrews chapter 10. We know the day's approaching. And he told us there, as you see the day approaching, so much the more. And I think we need to do more. We can do more. I know some folks say, well, I'm tired. I'm wore out. Yeah, well, ask God for some strength. He can give it to you. Amen. And uh, if he can do what he did with Abraham and he can do what he did with some of them other folks that was old, he can do a lot with us. So may God help us and give us the grace and the strength that we need to do so much the more. 2024 might be the end. This might be our last roundup. Might be the last, might be the last run for the church and the Lord call us home. So God help us to do all that we can uh, while we can so that we'll not regret wasted time when we stand before him. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name we come before you. We thank you for the privilege to be at the house of the Lord. Thank you for the health and strength that you've given us. Thank you for the many that you've brought through the flu. And we pray for these others that are going through the flu, the COVID, the other sicknesses, uh, for Moody and others that's going through other types of problems. I pray that, Father, you'd give healing and give help. Lord, as we ask you this morning, we know that you're able and capable of sending the health and healing across our land. We ask you, Lord, please have mercy on us and do that for us and bless us and give us healing. Help us, Lord, to have the strength, the wisdom, the grace that we need to perform that which is before us. Lord, we want to do thy work and thy will. We want you to be pleased with the life that we live. We ask you, Father, for those that's been on our hearts lately and others that's out there that needs to be saved, that, Lord, you'd save them by your marvelous grace. Lord Jesus, help us to get the church together, get it ready for your coming as soon around the corner. And I pray that you'd help us, that we'd, we'd be prepared. God, have your will today. Be again with the sick. We ask it, Father, in Jesus' name. 
Amen and amen. All right, let's stand and sing. Power in the blood. Amen. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. training back there <laughs> we'll put that one on him instead of Clarence so Clarence don't get upset with us
forsaken, I'm never alone. One day I'm moving to my brand new home. I'm blessed beyond measure, just look close, you'll see. My Lord is taking good care of me. I'm blessed beyond measure, just look close, you'll see. My Lord is taking good care of me. Oh 
peace through the blood. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know is through the because of that old rugged tree hanging on dark cavalry that is my only plea is through the Appreciate the Lord and His goodness and the blood He shed for me. That's what it all come through, the shedding of His blood. Uh, God's been good to us. God's blessed us. And uh, it's just amazing how much God loves us, isn't it? And to know who we are, what we are, and yet He still loves us is just amazing to me. And uh, I know me, know who I am, what I am, and where I come from. And uh, God's love is amazing to me. Deuteronomy chapter 29, if you would, this morning. I want to try to share a little thought with you. feel like the Lord has directed our hearts towards as a closing sermon for the year. What a year we've had. Better than it was a year or two before that, but we've had a good <laughs> steady year of labors. And uh, I thank God thank the Lord so much for his health and help that he gave us to be able to complete what we did through the summer. Uh, we started about the 1st of June and labored all summer long, and uh, we wondered if we'd ever get the chairs, and they finally came in. So we're, we're grateful for the, for the help of the Lord in everything that took place, uh, from the providing of the funds to providing the help and all you good workers that's been involved with it. Uh, some of you is online with us today. Uh, some of you here present, but we are thankful for what the Lord has done in blessing our facility and, and helping us to do some uh, needed upgrades. Uh, and it's wonderful. It's, uh, it's the Lord's house, and I want it to be the absolute best we can do with for the Lord's house. Amen? And we want to see folks saved. Uh, I've got folks on my heart right now that, that I want to see saved right now. I, I mean right now. And there's other, other folks that have strayed somewhat that I want to see the Lord reclaim. And, and uh, the old terms used to be reclaiming those backslidden. And I want to see the Lord uh, do a work in their hearts. I've got a series I'm working on in my heart. Uh, on backsliding, I've been been working off and on for years with it. Preacher Joe encouraged me to do something with it and put it in book form, and I hadn't yet, have not yet done that. Uh, but I've got a lot on that. I want to try to get together, and I'll probably try to preach through the series uh, to you. Uh, some of it is is some older material that will be reworked, uh, but it is necessary stuff for us to hear today. Uh, that is helpful for us today. So Deuteronomy chapter number 29. Uh, if you're able, I'd like for you to stand. We're going to read the Word of God today, and we're going to honor it in that. So if you're able, if you're not, God understands that. I'm going to start reading in verse number 16, and then I'll go back afterwards and give you a little bit of a summary. Verse 16 says, For we know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt and how we came through the nations which we passed by. And we have seen their abominations and their idols, wood, stone, silver, and gold, which were among them. Least there should be among you 
man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away from uh, this day from the Lord our God to go and serve gods of those of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it come to pass when he hear the words of this curse that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imaginations of mine heart and add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and the jealous and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. And the Lord shall separate unto him, or separate him unto evil out of the tribe of Israel according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of law, so that the generations to come of your children that shall rise up after you and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say when they see the plagues of the land and the sickness which the Lord hath laid upon it and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burneth that is not sown nor beareth nor any grass groweth therein like the uh, overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adam and Zebrium, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Even all nations shall wear up, even all nations shall say, Whereof hath the Lord done thus unto this land? What meaneth the heat of his of this great anger? Then men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when they when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, for they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not, whom he had not given unto them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land to bring upon it the curse of Curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of the, their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. Let's pray. Father, help us today with thy word. May the Holy Ghost of God embed it deep in our souls. Remind us daily of thy word. Lead us and guide us by it. Use us uh, in serving you through it. Lord, I pray that you'd forgive me and cleanse me and purge me and let nothing be in my mind, thoughts, or soul that would be a hindrance to the working of the Holy Ghost of God. Lord, I pray that he may touch my body, give me strength and help as we try to preach thy word today. Save the sinner, strengthen the saints of God, and Lord, give the soothing of the Spirit of God unto those that needs his comfort. We ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. I want to I deal with this thought just a little bit this morning as a closing thought of the year and an opening thought for the new year. And I want to give you, the Lord here deals with a formula for facing the new year. This is going to give us a little bit of a formula for facing the new year. And, and I usually try to close out or open the new year uh, with something that encourages us in that way. And that's what I want to do today. Now in this, I'm going to deal primarily out of verse number 29, but it gives us this uh analogy, this summarization of the children of Israel and how God had gave them the covenant and God had given them warnings and promises. And, you know, even, even with the warnings and the promises, they still failed God many times in their walk with the Lord. Let me give you some reminders about the children of Israel. They're at the threshold of what God has before them. Behind them were the promises God gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
behind them were, were the deliverances of, from slavery that God had done in their life. They were slaves in the Egyptian world for a long period of time, and God gave them deliverance from that. That should have been enough for them to want to serve God the rest of their days. Can I get a witness there? God delivered them from slavery and gave them freedom. That alone should have been enough for them to be sold out to serve the God of heaven all their days. Boy, shouldn't we play that on our card today? God has delivered us from the slavery of sin and from the troubles and, 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 and the encaption of Satan, should not we want to serve him all the days of our life? Amen? So we, we, we notice some of those things that God did for the children of Israel. God gave them promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that would follow through the years. God gave them deliverance from slavery. But yet they turned to a golden calf. Now, what a miracle God does in, in, in a lot of things. And even, even, even the, the, the miracles that the children of Israel themselves worked. I mean, can you imagine the miracle that Aaron worked? They go down and they stand by a beautiful fire and, 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 and far. And they stand there at that beautiful far. And all of a sudden, out of that beautiful far, come walking a golden calf. What in the world? I can't. Ain't that just a miracle? I mean, how that out of that, out of that beautiful far comes a golden calf? That's a miracle. I mean, good night. But what's so foolish about the whole story is Aaron thinks Moses that has just been on the mountain for 40 days with God. Talk about full up. Moses is full up with God. 40 days he's been on the mountain, right? He comes down off of the mountain with the commandments God has handwritten and the first thing Aaron does is lie just like the devil. And he expects Moses to believe it. Now listen to me. When you got somebody that's been walking with God and they got, got the touch of God and the glow of God on them, don't be foolish enough to believe that they're going to believe your lies. It's not going to work. They've got too much God about them for that to pass. It ain't going to pass the grade. So Moses comes down and they've done this golden calf thing. Man, what a mess. A golden calf. I mean, good night. Just walks up out of the fire. It's amazing what things can happen. It sort of sounds like some of the kids' stories we get, right? I mean, no wonder children can tell such good lies. Some of their forefathers were good at it. It's an easily, easily learned trait. Amen? Don't be too angry with them. They probably learned it from somebody close to them how to do those things. I'm going to let that sit in just a minute. <clears throat> but when you think about the children of Israel with the golden calf, oftentimes they had such faithlessness in God I mean, God done such great miracles. Why would you ever doubt the God of heaven? Why would you? God said, if you'll go forward through this wilderness, I'm going to give you the promised land. And that's after they just crossed the Red Sea that God held the walls of water back while they walked over and dropped the walls of water on Pharaoh's crowd. How many more miracles do you need to see to believe when God says, go get that promised land, I done give it to you? How many more miracles do we need to see? You know, oftentimes we are just like the children of Israel. God has done great and wonderful miracles in our lives. And then we come to the threshold of a new year or a new work that's before us, a new task that we're to take on, and we're like, oh my goodness, what in the world? How are we going to be able to do it? He done that. He can do this. Hey, listen, when God can hold back the Red Sea as he did for the children of Israel, what have we to worry with? So you see that God dealt with the children of Israel in the promises and their deliverances and their 
failures and, and faithlessness and they're grumbling and complaining. You know, you, you're in bad shape if you're whining about eating chicken. It's hard for you to ask the preacher to pray for you when you're griping about chicken. Because us preachers are very fond of eating chicken. We don't want no more crowing on us. Amen. So we're going to eat up all that chicken we can. And here they are walking around in a the wilderness. They didn't have to plant nothing. They didn't have to plow nothing. All they had to do was gather in the chicken that he blowed in, gather in the manna that he rained down from heaven, and they had chicken and bread. What else do you need? Sweet tea. Okay, I got you. <clears throat> they had all kinds of herbs to make that stuff up with, so they was all right there too. Amen. So when you think about the children of Israel, the things that were behind them, but you also think about the things that was before them. You think about the place of great promises that was just before them. You, you, you look at, you look at uh, uh, God had given them a promise of the promised land. He had, he had promised them a land that was full of fruit, a wonderful place to go to. He, he, I understand there's uncertainties and dangers that are just ahead of them. They're not sure what to do with that. And you know, that's where a lot of folks has trouble is those things that are uncertain or, 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 or areas that we have not yet trodden, we get a little fearful about those. Well, preacher, I, I, don't, I don't know if we can quite do that or not. I don't, preacher, I don't know if we ought, maybe, maybe we ought not go there. You know, maybe we ought not start this new, maybe, maybe we ought not try this. I'm not going to get you to raise your hand, but if I had presented this project before I proved God was able to take care of it, how many would have really wanted to dive into it? See, God knows how some folks is, and He showed us ahead of time He's able to take care of it and pay for it. God done that. We can't take no glory in that. We didn't do it. God done it. God done every bit of it. God paid for the whole thing. God did that. God pre-planned that for us. So we can't take any credit there. And knowing how faith weak we are sometimes, he had to do it the way he done it for us to be able to go forward and do what we do. I mean, what if I was to present you with a $500,000 project that I want to do this year? And we didn't got that kind of money in the bank. Preacher, what if I said, and, and, and let you know without a doubt, God placed that in our heart, we need to do this thing. What, what you going to do now? Preacher, see, the children of Israel was like that. They had not yet entered into Canaan land. And they got nervous and they got scared and they got fearful. What we got to go through, what we've got to do. See, we get comfortable where we are, even sitting in a wilderness. People get comfortable and don't want to move forward. It's barren. There's no planting. There's no growing. There's no new fruit. Wilderness living is not where God wants His children. He wants us in fruitful living. He wants us where we're laboring a little bit, planting a little bit of seed and watching it grow. That's what God wants us to go forward with. So we see the potentials, but we also see the possible problems in the future. We too stand oftentimes at the threshold of a new year. We've got 20, 24 Starts tomorrow. Brand new year. Now, tomorrow I'm not going to be much different than I am today. But we use that milestone. We use that, that specific date as a brand new start. We want to put everything in this past year as past and leave it there. And we want to go to this new and a fresh start. We often like those fresh starts, right? 
We can wipe away the errors. We can wipe away the failures. We can wipe away the troubles. We can wipe away a lot of stuff of the past. And we can go into this brand new spanking future with no problems. I got news for you. 2024 is going to be like 2023. It's going to be a year you're going to have to live. You're going to go through valleys. You're going to go through troubles. You're going to go through trials. But God's given us victories. So we need, we, need to, we need to gird up the loins of our mind and be prepared to do so much the more in 2024. God's given us the provisions of salvation. God has brought us through the pain of hardships. And he's helped us through. We could, we could take a time out and we could go through testimonies around the church today of some of the hardships that we entered during 2023. We can also, rightfully so, talk about the victories, how God brought us through some of those terrible things of 2023. God, God's, God's brought us through a lot of things that we, we at the time did not think we could cross through that valley. We didn't want to go through that valley. We didn't want to enter the valley, much less take the process that's there to go through that valley. But listen, it's through those valleys where we draw closer and experience more of the God of heaven. He walks with us, by us, and before us as we do the valleys. So when you study this out, verse 29 says, The secret things belongeth unto the Lord our God. I'm glad we can use that little word, our. As he was for the children of Israel, he was their Lord God. So is he our Lord God. I can say that as they said that. He is Our Lord God. So when you look at the secret things, the secret things here it says belong to God. That's the things that really gets us in a lot of trouble. You know know what what we say about the cat, the curiosity of the cat, or curiosity is what killed the cat, something like that. You know, they're so nosy. Judy had a cat or her mama had a cat, and they named it rightfully so. Nosy was its name. There wasn't anything that that cat did not try to stick her stinking nose into. (laughs) Climb in, crawl over, climb through, tear up, whatever. That's the nosiest cat I've ever seen. It's amazing. You know, sometimes we are so much like that. See, there's the secret things belongs to the Lord. You know what's funny? Let let, let me entertain you just a little bit. When you get around a crowd, or you notice there's a crowd around, try this and watch what happens. Start whispering or talking low. And when you do that, you're going to watch folks' bodies will begin to... We so stinking nosy. If somebody starts... Somebody starts whispering and talking real low. Now, if I'm talking normal, the kids pays me no attention. They have they could care less what I'm saying if I'm talking normal. But if I tighten it down a little bit and I begin to try, I don't I don't do good at whispering. Listen, y'all, I can whisper downstairs, they hear me upstairs. That's the truth. <laughs> but because they notice there's a little difference in the toning. They'll peel their ear. I'm telling you, you can, hear them, you can hear them coming down the steps. Trying to, what they talking about? What do they say? Especially at Christmas time, you know, when you're planning gifts and things of that nature. Boy, they get so nosy. You know, <clears throat> y'all wouldn't believe this. I, I know y'all won't believe this. <laughs> Years ago, before Angela threw me out of that office and put me in the back room somewhere, I used to have my office right there. She knows I'm kidding. <clears throat> if that door went shut with me and somebody else in there, 
unto Jesus. He knows I'm telling the truth. That everybody that was talking around in the church ended up in that hallway at the door. <laughs> Craziest thing ever seen. Or at the window. They'd go outside the window and try to look in and see who's in there. I'm telling the truth before God I am. People just know, see. Those secret things, we can't stand it. Now, I'm not preaching at you because I'm the world's worst. My mother could never hide Christmas presents from Curtis. I, brother, I don't care if she put them in the car. I figured out how to move the seat in the old cars. You could pull that seat forward and go right into the trunk. <laughs> Under Jesus, you could have three families in her trunk. She had one of those Galaxy 500s that the trunk's as long as your car right now. Big old thing. I don't know how they drove around. I'd have hated to try to parallel park some of those things. But I'm telling you, that trunk, honest, honest, you could put a full-size bed in that thing. It was huge. And she'd put my gifts in there, and I'd do everything possible to see what's in that trunk. I couldn't stand the secrets. Never, I just could not stand the secrets. Somebody, somebody would say something at work, when, and years later at work, and it'd be something said. And, I can't tell you. I, come on, dude. What are you even mention it for if you can't tell me? I, I, just, I, I can't tell you. And I'm like, man, you're going to drive me nuts. I can't stand not knowing these secret things. Here's what we got to learn, church. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. There's a lot of things that ain't none of my business. That's his business. How he's going to do it who he's going to do it with, when he's going to do it, that ain't my business. When it is my business, he said he'd let me know. Because he tells us here that, but those things which are revealed. So there's going to be some things revealed to me, and that's what i got to worry about. But right now, those secret things is driving me crazy. Right now, folks are all concerned about the national and the world events. What's going on here? What's going to happen there? When's this going to happen? When's that going to happen? Oh my goodness, what are they going to do in Israel? Is Israel and Russia going to get... China going... Oh my... What are we going to do? What are you going to do about it? Not a thing but pray. So why worry about it? I can't change it. There's no need in me fretting and staying up all night about it. Because the God of heaven has already written the story. He knows the winds, He knows the hows, and He knows the who. When I need to know, He'll let me know. And if we could get that, we'd be all right. This, this unknown secret stuff drives us crazy. You go to the doctor. They do a little test. They know what the test was. But they ain't going to tell you about it until they get you in the office a little later on down the road, three, four, five weeks later, and then they're going to sit you down. But you want to know right now. <clears throat> they messed up a few years ago and they started this patient portal. When he gets it, I can look at it. But now sometimes you don't need to do that because you may not understand that language just like it's supposed to be understood. And you might bring more fret and trouble to yourself than what really is there. The secret things belongs to the Lord. See, God's sovereign. We, we, don't, need to, we don't need to be concerned. We need to pray and we need to do, do what God tells us and reveals to us to do. But the, the national events... The world events, those things God's in control of. God's in control of taking care of Israel. And I don't want this to sound wrong, but he can handle that by himself. I, I, I don't want us to not pray for them. I don't want us to not do what we can to help when we're supposed to. I, I don't want that, but I, God can handle Israel. 
uh, was you there when he took care of Pharaoh? Did he need your help with Pharaoh? Well, why do you think he's gonna worry? We're gonna we're gonna have to help him with all this other crap. He can handle it. It's okay. God is in control. And when we realize those things that we don't know, we don't need to know because God's in control. Uh, there's new things that will come up in the next year with our family. We've got lives. We've got deaths. We've got troubles. We've got valleys. All these things. It would drive us nuts if we knew what we might have to face in the next year or the next two years. We'd go nuts. If we knew of the problems or, or, the, or the pains that we would have to deal with, we would be, oh my goodness. But see, God's grace for those are awaiting us when we get there. God's got the grace that we need sufficient for every problem that we will face. When we get that kind of faith, we don't have to worry about secret things. Let me take you back a couple of years. When you was two, four, six years old, how many of you knew what a power bill was? How many of you knew what the grocery bill was? I, I don't remember ever wondering if I was going to eat. And I'd done lots of it. So I didn't have a lot of problem because my brother was very foolish much of the time. He made a lot of food and walked away. I didn't want to see it go to waste. But uh, a lot of times the food he had prepared, he didn't get to eat because somebody else did. I, I didn't worry about food. I didn't worry about paying the power bills because my father took care of that. My earthly daddy took care of those things. He didn't, he didn't say, now, Curtis, come here. We need to talk about this. We're going to we gotta figure out how we're going to pay the bills this week, son. That's not my problem. I didn't have no reason to worry with that. Why do we think we need to help worry about the things that God's got full control of? I am responsible for trying to take care of my body, but my health and welfare is in His hands. And if like Job, He decides to let me go through a trial or a tribulation or some troubles, He going to give me the grace like He did Job. Why do you think God give us the book of Job? Why, why do you think God has preserved all these years the book of Job for us to read? So we can understand, yes, man goes through troubles. Yes, man born of a woman's full of troubles. Yes, he's going to have a terrible time sometimes. But God will be with him. Job said, I can't find him on the left, on the right. Can't find him in front of me. Can't find him behind me. But he knoweth the way that I take. It ain't about what all we know when we know he's in control. See, the secret things belong to the Lord. The sovereign things belong to the Lord. We don't, we don't need to know everything. We don't need to handle everything. Quick little easy definition on sovereign. He knows everything before it ever happens. Sovereign, he's capable of handling everything. Everything before it happens. He knew you'd need a Savior, and long before you ever got here, he done took care of that. God, God knows what we need before we get there, and he's able to take care of those things. Sovereign things. Isaiah 55, 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We cannot even begin to think as God thinks. I can't handle my stuff. Much less handle my stuff, your stuff, your stuff, your stuff, your stuff, your stuff, your stuff. Your stuff. And then the other five billion people around. But God can. And since God can, what do I need to worry about for? Any of y'all ever been a boss? at a plant or a, a factory or a place of employment? You've been a boss before? 
you oversaw a lot of things. But it wasn't your responsibility to do all those things, was it? You had people in place to take care of things. You trained and taught them how to do this, how to do that, and you oversaw everything. If one was lacking and you needed some help there, you either helped them or you got some help to them, right? God's a much bigger and a much better boss than we could ever dream of being. He can supervise this whole thing and take care of it. What's funny is this. Oftentimes I'll look at the preacher's messages. And what is, what is funny is every once in a while, and, and us old independent boys don't have a guideline for our sermon next Sunday. What I'm going to preach next Sunday, God knows and he'll give it to me when he's ready. I, I don't have a laid out guideline for my preaching sermons. What's amazing is, is once in a while you'll go on there and you'll see where God was in Atlanta, Georgia preaching this. He's in Burnsville, North Carolina preaching that same thought. He's down yonder on Fayetteville Avenue in Fayetteville, North Carolina with a preacher boy preaching that. See, God, God's able to put out what God wants to put out through all the world because he's got preacher boys he's called to send out a message. What's, what's going to be exciting is this. We probably ain't going to be really aware of it and ready for it. But when we get that last message, I wonder what we're all going to preach. I'm talking about the one right before he goes, whoop, 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 and, the, and the church is called up. The last message a preacher gets to preach on this life. I wonder if we're going to be in sync on that one. Behold, the Lord cometh, and we're gone. Be amazing, won't it? See, God is sovereign. God is able to handle all things well. Matthew 6, 33, Take no thought, therefore, for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought of, its, of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. God, many times through the Scriptures, tells us not to worry about tomorrow, yet we are concerned about the secret things. I don't know what tomorrow's got. What if it's a blessed day and you sit over here all day? You run today because you're worried about tomorrow. Tomorrow might be one of the best days of the year. And we're sitting here, oh gosh, what, what am I going to do tomorrow? Listen, folk, let God take care of the secret things. Let me finish. God can take care of the secret things. Don't be obsessed with the future. There's too many people making money off of people that are worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. And they ain't got a clue. There's these astrologers and all this different, they read the stars and they tell you, what's the, what's the horoscope? Say that real slow. Horoscope. I'm looking at horror. Say it backwards. Scope. I'm looking at horror. Come on, people. That ain't. How do they know what tomorrow's going to be? They ain't God. But we got folks that pays all kinds of money to try to find out what's coming tomorrow. There's even preachers out there that act like they can predict junk. And they're as foolish as the other folks. Hello. God knows what's coming tomorrow. Amen. So we need to trust Him for that. Don't be excess. Don't worry about the future. That's what God's supposed to do. I, somewhere in my outline, I put it down here. Well, it's on the next part. <clears throat> he reveals things to us that belongs to us. He reveals things to us that we need to mind. We have enough to be concerned with that we should leave the things of God to the things of God. You know, as an employee, it's not my responsibility to worry about the boss's job too. When I was a deputy, 
It wasn't my place to worry about what the sheriff himself had to do. That's his position. I, it wasn't for me to tell the other lieutenants, the other sergeants, what to do and how to do it. That, that what, I was employee, not the employer. It's not my place to try to tell God how to handle everything or to worry about it. He can handle it, folks. Have y'all been around very long? It looks like he's done a pretty good job so far. A lot of things we've all been through, and God's done pretty good taking care of them. Many things we've been through we didn't think we could make it through. Here you are. I could, I could, I could do some casket viewing this morning. And take us back down the aisles of many of our dear loved ones that we thought we can't make it without him or without her tomorrow. Look at you. God brought you this far. God's going to take you all the way. It's going to be all right. God is in control. I was having a conversation recently about a loved one that's passed on. God help us to understand they're all right. When they're saved, they're all right. They're doing well. They are doing better than well. So rest assured they're all right. And we're going to be with them soon. I mean, even if, even if you live to be an old, 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 old person, it's still soon. Because we ain't young whippersnappers no more. Not all of us is as young as old Corey boy. 17, youngest dude in the building. Well, I didn't see Ryan. Well, you need to sit up so I can see you, son. There you go. The youngest one, I'm sorry. Youngest one to build in 13. It still ain't going to be long. I remember yesterday when I was 13. <laughs> and it went. <laughs> see, God, in this text, it shows us that the secret things belongs to God. And the revealed things belong to us. We've got enough to worry about that God has revealed to us to do that we don't need to be worrying about his business. I put it this way. We need to mind our own business, so to speak. Those things that belong to the Father is his responsibility. How he handles and how he carries them out, he can handle it very well. He always has and he always will. God help us to trust Him. Amen. We must be aware of our responsibilities and we must accept our responsibilities. We've got more than enough to do right now that we don't need to be worrying about everybody else's stuff. God showed me years ago when He settled me in here at Tabernacle that Tabernacle is my responsibility as a pastor. What Brother West or any of the other preachers in town Brother Pope up there in Calvary in Union Grove, Brother Hazel up at Calvary of Statesville or uh, Harvest. They're not my business. I'm not saying that in to be an ugly way. But how they handle their work and how they operate in their work is their business. Now, as a brother or a sister in Christ, we aid and help as we can. But that work is their business. This is our business. This is where God placed me at to work. And I learned that years ago. So I try to tend to tabernacle business and let them other guys do theirs. The way they run their show or the way they operate their services is their business. It's not mine. Now that don't mean I don't preach the truth and deal with sin and things of that nature. Encouragement and all that goes with it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this is tabernacle's responsibility right here. We're going to give an account for tabernacles responsibility. What God's revealed to us to do, we need to be aware of and we need to accept. God's got stuff for us to do here. We're not just here to hang out. This is not a social club. This is a church. Church has a commission on it to take the word. The things that we know to do is what we're responsible for. James 4.17 says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it's a sin. 
To him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it's a sin. We don't have to get into all the ugly sin labels. We just need to look at what we're supposed to do that we know to do and be responsible for those. Let the secret things stay with God and let us deal with those things that have been revealed to us. I could take a little while, and I'm not going to do that, but I could take a little while and go through a list of things that we know we're responsible for. I am going to mention a couple real quick. We know that we've been commissioned, we're responsible to get the truth to the sinners. We know that. Israel failed to follow God. They didn't go into the promised land that God had for them. So for 40 years they walk around in the wilderness and they die in the wilderness except for the youngins. 20 and under went on over except for Joshua and Caleb. The others died in the wilderness. They died in a barren type living. Never got to enjoy the promised land God had for them. God's got a promised land for us, church. God's got fruitfulness for us. We must accept our responsibility and go forward with it. Do what we can for the glory of God. The things that we know are His responsibility, leave to Him. The things that we know that are our responsibility, we need to take care of. James 4.14 says this, For whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. Does anybody know what's coming tomorrow? They, they predict the weather, but they're often wrong with that, aren't they? Well, they just guesstimating it. Looks like the wind's blowing this way and there's a little bit of a cloud coming with it. Maybe we're going to get some rain tomorrow. That's what they do. That wind could change and not get nothing. Right? We know these things. We don't know what tomorrow holds, so why worry about it in that respect? We understand preparing. But for me to worry about what all is tomorrow, that's God's. I do what I know to do and do the best I can with it. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little while and then it vanishes away. We don't know how, how much rain's going to fall, but we know we must plant, fertilize, and cultivate. If a farmer waits till it rains, he's not going to get a crop. He's got to plow. Plant, cultivate, fertilize, get it ready, and pray the rain shows. And that's in God's responsibility. God wants a good crop for that farmer. God will bless him with the rain. Amazing how it can rain on one farm and not rain on another farm. That's, God knows what he's doing. He knows how to do. God can take care of these things. Deuteronomy 31, 8 says, And the Lord, he it is that doeth, doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. God's got it in control, church. We're going to be all right. We don't know how our children's going to turn out. But we have a responsibility to train them up, Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go when he's old and not depart from it. We don't know how they're going to turn out. But we have a responsibility to train them up. It's our God-given responsibility to teach them about Jesus. We think in this neighborhood that we live in these days that it's the school's responsibility to train our children. And church, that is wrong. I'm for education. I believe we ought to train up kids. I believe they need education in the social world as well. But our first responsibility is to teach our children about God. If they don't know Him, they go to hell. It's our responsibility to train them up in the right way. We carry a responsibility to train up our child, our children. It's our responsibility. I probably didn't do too good, but I've done the best I know how to do with the grace of God and His Word. I personally think they turned out pretty good. I'm thankful for the good grace of God. Amen. God's been good to us. We don't know if a person's going to accept Christ or not. That doesn't take away our responsibility to share the gospel with them. 
man, the people that's around us now that don't know anything about Jesus. They, they don't know anything. These people moving into our area by leaps and bounds. I mean, there's, they're coming in like coveys. It's, it's amazing how the people just flooding into this area. They can't even get the houses finished and they're moving in. That little old development right there next to Miss K, before they finished building the house next to one house, they was moving in. I'm like, they ain't done yet. They're in it. We got bunches and bunches and bunches of people moving in our area that don't know God. We got a responsibility, Tabernacle, to get the gospel out. We can't say, well, you know, Calvary's over yonder and Calvary's down yonder and Harvest is right there and uh, there's another tabernacle up here. And, and, you know, they. So? That don't mean we're not supposed to be sowing the seed here. Amen. There's more than enough folks in our county to overfill the churches that are here if we can get them in there. But there's a lot of folk who don't know Jesus at all. They need to be born again. God help us. We don't know when Christ is coming. I don't know. I know it's near according to the scripture, but I don't know. Matthew 24, 36 tells us, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. The only person that knows that when Jesus is coming is the Father himself. Watch ye therefore, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour the Lord doth come. I don't know. It could be tomorrow. It could be this time next year. It could be three years down the road. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be many years down the road because of the way the, 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 the world is versus what the Bible said as it is in the days of Noah, so, it, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And that's seven years tribulation time before that all takes place. So we're close to the coming of the Lord. I could, I can, I could say in, he's probably going to come this next year. I'm not setting a date exactly, but he could probably come this next year. You can't argue that to be wrong. I've got as much to show that he's coming as you've got to say that he ain't coming. So what do we do? Prepare. If, if you would think this way, that we've got one more month left before he comes, how would we live? How would we operate? What would be different in our devotion life? What would be different in our prayer life? What would be different in our exercise of, of spiritual freedoms in the world, what would be different if we thought it might be here in a month? January 30 might be the day. Don't know that it won't be. Can't say that it will. But I can say he told us to prepare because we don't know the day, we don't know the hour, but he's given us some things to look at to let us know the time is near when we see as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And those things are active now. Ad imaginations of man, mind is, is wicked continually. That's the way it was in the days of Noah. They're given in marriage. Sodomy was on a rampage in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. They was, they was same-sex uh, marriages and activities in those days just the whole city was consumed with it and we've got to that place in America in much of our cities so we're there we're at the time of the coming of the son of man so God help us we got a brand new year in front of us the secret things belongs to the Lord those things we don't know that's for him don't worry about it he can handle it. But those things which are revealed belongeth unto us and to our children. 
See, there comes responsibility. He's revealed things to us that we know. We know his coming is close. He's done revealed that to us through the scripture. And it's our responsibility to teach our children to be prepared for the coming of the Son of Man. He's revealed to us our responsibility to commission the church to get the gospel out. He's revealed unto us our obligation to worship Him and to love on Him and to serve Him all the days of our life. He's revealed these things. that We could go on and on with things He's revealed to us that we are responsible for and we have been made aware of. And for Him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to Him is a sin. we got a lot in front of us to do. I pray God give us the strength, the health, the wisdom, and the grace to do what's before us. There's a lot of folk needing to get saved. I could fill up a side of this church, just about fill up a side of this church with people that I know that are connected to this church that need to be born again friends or family members that's been mentioned that needs to be born again. We could, fill up, we could fill the rest of the church up with those that are supposed to be saved but are not in the church serving. Now before you say, I preach, I don't know about all that, sit down and think and do some counting. There's a lot of people been through here in my 16 years that's not in a church today. That means they're backslid. Preacher, you ain't going to... Yeah, I am. If they're not in church where they're supposed to be with the Lord, they have slid backwards from where they're supposed to be with Jesus. That's called backsliding. They need to get right with the Lord and get back in the service of the Lord. I know people get hurt in church. I'm well aware of that. Uh, church folk are brutal. Oliver Green said years ago, I got to quit, I know, I'm sorry. I didn't get to preach last Sunday, so I'm trying to get it out and I did just have a little bit of a thought but uh, Oliver Green said the most wicked meanest person that you'll ever deal with is a backslidden Christian I remember him saying that in one of his tent revivals he said they're cruel somebody that's backslidden listen there's a lot of folks that needs to get right with the Lord they need to get where they need to be with the Lord they need to be in full service Surrender to whatsoever is thy will, Lord, and say, here am I. Isaiah said, here am I, Lord, send me. After he got thoroughly right with God, he was ready to go serve the Lord wherever God wanted him to go. That's what we need. We need folks that are willing, regardless of where God wants you to go, what God wants you to do, say, I will. You ain't got much time left to do that. There's some preacher boys that God's calling on. They're not surrendering. There's some lay people that God's calling on. They're not surrendering. There's some folks that should be going to the mission field. They're not surrendering. Hey, how, when do you think you're going to do that? The time is almost gone for your opportunity of service. And there ain't nothing better. In this life, there's nothing better than being where God wants you in His service. You'll find more peace, even in problems, even in pain, there's no better place to be than being in the will of God. I was talking with Corey. We was talking about some scriptures last night. I was talking about the Apostle Paul. He was in prison, in stocks and bonds, blood running out of his back. Yet he was singing the praises of God. How you do that? He was in the perfect will of God right where he was. God gave him peace and God gave him praise. Paul said at one time, I think myself happy. It tells me he was in a bad way. He was in a bad situation, and he was thinking right. God help us to think right. Amen? We got a lot to do. So much to more in 2024. We got a lot more to do, church. God got us warmed up. We ready to go. We've got things set up. We've got a lot to do in 2024. I, I look and pray that we can see a bunch of sinners get saved by the good grace of God. That's what I want. I want the church to be right. 
so sinners can get saved. I want God to work in here and do, and we see sinners get saved. I've got some things already on the calendar for this coming year that you are going to be extravagantly excited about. I need a lot more of uh, words to throw with that to, to really show how good. It's going to be good. I got some good preaching coming. I got some good singing coming. We got some good stuff set up in the year to come. God is going to do some great things. So much the more in 2024. We got things behind us. And I know that oftentimes this time of the year we'll say, let's put those things behind us and forget them. Forget in the past. No, I don't want you to. What, preacher? I don't want you to forget. I want you to remember what God brought you through. I want you to remember how God has helped you overcome some of the things in your life that you thought would be your downfall. You thought would be the pit you'd never crawl out of. And God's brought you thus far. He's still, he's still working. Things that we thought we'd never be able to live through. And God has brought us through I could go back several years to when we had a major loss here. Church was doing good. I thought everything was going great, and all of a sudden we had a, a major loss. Bunches and bunches and bunches of folks quit. I, 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 I thought, what the world, Lord? Am I supposed to quit and go? I, I, I wanted to reach for a white towel, but that's just not in my blood. You don't ever want to fight me. Unless you want to do prison time, because you'll have to kill me. I'm not going to quit. I don't quit. I'm going to get back up. If I had to drag myself up, I'm going to. I'm not going to quit. That's the way I was built. And that's because of the help of the good grace of God Almighty that's helped me to stay in the fight. i got to keep going. We've, we've changed some things through the years, but God has given us the ability to carry on. God's been good to me. I'm amazed. I stand amazed at the awesomeness of God Almighty working in my life that I'm still in the fight of faith for Him. It's God. I couldn't have done it. God's been good to me. God's put that grit in me. God's put that go in me. God's put the gospel in me to share with others. Amen. Let's do what we can in 2024. Hey Amen. I know I was a little long this morning, but you ain't coming back at night, so you need a little extra. You didn't get no Sunday school, so you need a little extra. But I, I want you to think about you got a brand new year in front of you. Let's, let's do more for him. You ask the Lord to help you do more, and he, I believe the Lord will help you. I believe the Lord wants us to. I believe he laid it in my heart the other day as I was praying and seeking the will of God for the new year. I believe he laid it in my heart so much the more in 2024. We can do more. We can do more. I don't know how in the world. I don't know how I can do any more. I really don't. But God said we can, so we can. God can help us. Let's pray. You mind the Lord this morning. If God's dealt with your heart and you need to come to the altar, come on. Let the Lord help you. God will, God will help you if you want to come on. And uh, ask the Lord to help you in the year to come. So much the more in 2024. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to help us here this morning. Lord, I know I was a little long, but I pray you'll take these thoughts that you've laid in our hearts and use them for your honor and your glory. Lord, I pray for everyone that's here and those that are tuned in with us. God, would you deal in the hearts. Help folks to realize we can do even more than we have in this year to come. We want to see more folks get saved. We want to meet, see more of God's children serving. We want to see, uh, God, you're giving the soothing, the, the, the Holy Ghost touch that uh, folks need. God, we just, we just want to see you doing so much more in us and through us in this next year. Forgive us where we failed. Forgive us where we come short. Forgive us where we backed up or been faithless. And help us, Lord, to go forward. Lord, let us not be as the children of Israel were in those days where they walked around in circles for 40 years, but Lord, let us go on to the promised land. You've got promises for us out there, Lord. You've got, 
you've got fruitfulness for us. And I pray, God, you'll give us that faith that we need to go forward. Lord, help us to let you worry about the secret things and us deal with those things that's been revealed to us. Let us, let us handle our responsibilities. For we ask these things, Father, in Jesus' precious and powerful name. Amen and amen. Many still praying. You want to come? Come on. Ask the Lord to help you today. Maybe you're here. You ain't been saved before. You've never known Jesus as your personal Savior. God's dealt with your heart. Come to the altar. We'll help you.